Hey, it's Mo Ari. And Tiffany. And you're listening to the Hashtag Love Goals podcast. Before we get into this episode, I just want you to remember that every human, regardless of identity, needs these three things, belonging, authenticity, and love. And after a decade of partnership, we've learned to co-create these things and so much more. So from wherever you're listening, we're going to go on a journey of becoming our own hashtag love goals. Now let's get into this episode. You are listening to the hashtag love goals podcast with Tiffany. And I'm Mo Ari. And I'm just excited for us to be here. We're here. We're we're just like uh, really just enjoying our relationship right now. Yeah. But uh, I have been a marriage and family therapist for a very long time. So I wanted to ask you, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in my first in my first sessions with clients, they always ask me, can you keep a secret mm-hmm. or some variation of that? Like, yeah. what is the role of therapist? And I always have to tell them that, you know, as a therapist, I'm not the keeper of secrets. Mm-hmm. I'm here to help the whole relationship. Right. 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 That's very different being a therapist and being the person in a relationship. Mm-hmm. So I figured it was a good question <laughs> to ask you because you yeah. have best friends, you have people that you confide in. I wonder if you think that they're that secrets are good in relationships, that they're OK. And um, I guess I'm getting more of your take on like whether or not you have some secrets that you have for me. Hmm. So I do not feel as if there are any secrets I have in our relationship at the current moment. At some point, maybe there were things I hadn't divulged fully or that I wasn't honest about in its entirety Mm. at the beginning of our relationship, I should say. Like? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe different things I didn't really like or things that I really did Mm. like that I was like, oh, am I I going to be judged about this thing? You know, when you're dating and getting to know a person, you want to impress them. And so if I'm not confident, let's say, in the thing I really like, let's say I really like archery, let's say, randomly. Um, I don't know. Are you going to think I'm weird if I like archery? So I'm not really (laughs) going to say it. So I wouldn't necessarily say it was a secret. It might have been more of like omission. Mm. Um, versus secret. <laughs> I would say that when it comes to like the deeper foundational things in the relationship, though, I felt very open about those things. Yeah. Um, and to your second question of whether I think secrets are okay, <sighs> I, I don't. I don't think so. Um, in a committed relationship, I think that divulging your truth, at least as you're aware of it, um, as accessible as it is to you, I think it's really important to express that. It mm-hmm. can also encourage vulnerability, yeah. right? Yeah. So if I share these things about myself that are important to me, that are part of my highest truth, yeah. even if it's cringy, yeah, I think it's kind of necess- necessary to talk about it. And I encourage my friends to do it all the time. Yeah. Now, when you divulge... I feel like that's that could be up for debate. That could be yeah. up for debate. Yeah, you know, as you're talking, I'm really sitting here thinking, like trying to reevaluate. I'm trying to take off the therapist hat, be the person in a relationship. Mm-hmm. And now I'm sitting here like, hmm, is it okay? <laughs> you know, as soon as you were like, I don't think it's okay, part of me wanted to be like, oh well, now we gotta figure out why it should be okay. <laughs> Yeah. So I'm just going to honor that, yeah. uh, that a part of me wants to rebel against that. Mm. And I wonder for how many people, like secrets, is there a way of keeping their independence? Because yeah. I felt that mm. part of me like coming up, as you yeah. were saying, I don't think it's okay. Knowing good and well, I've been a therapist, told everybody <laughs> not to keep secrets. Yeah. But I'm sitting here like, well, maybe secrets can be fine then. Mm-hmm. And I think that that could be some part of it. Maybe yeah. the frame around secrets in the context of therapy or in the context of relationships often gets framed as lying mm-hmm. so even when you said the word omission it it triggered this uh yeah. feeling about lying right but i'm wondering if that frame is unfair mm-hmm. that there are some things that are okay to keep to yourself uh because it's your process it's your yeah. work around right. having to heal it right let's say like you have a childhood trauma right. Um, right. that you don't tell your partner about because it's very painful you don't talk to anybody about it right Are you a liar because you're keeping it to yourself? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I would say that you're just not as authentic as you could be if you were sharing your truth. But does that make you a bad person Mm -hmm. to be in a relationship with? Right. Mm -mm. 
I don't think so. And I think as relationships evolve, like you might start out dating the person on your first date. Yeah. You might not go into your deepest, darkest True. childhood traumas. Yeah. You might talk about my favorite color, my zodiac <laughs> sign, like yeah. these types of things. But as you progress, I yeah. feel like. Um, building the relationship and the intimacy encourages more and more yeah, of that. Yeah. And we can't see, or I would encourage us to not, like you're saying, see omission as like this bad thing, mm. right? It could just be like a, not right now. Not right now. Or I'm healing this. Yeah. Or you can invite the person in to yeah. heal with you. Yeah. As long as you say, well, you know, you might say, this is not the whole of my truth. Yeah. I'm going to give you this piece of it. Can you yeah. help me work through this? Can you be patient with me while yeah. I work through it? Mm. Yeah. This is hard. <laughs> okay, because you, I understand that frame. And yeah. I'm really trying to put on my thinking cap yeah. and not be a therapist. <laughs> so I'm understanding that frame in the context of, let's say, things that are hard to share that mm. are just about you. Yeah. What if there are things that are hard to share that have to do with the other person. Like, mm. let's say you have an infidelity that mm. occurred and you're keeping that kind of secret. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. There is like, on one hand, me sharing this could hurt you. Mm. On the other hand, me sharing this could hurt you. <laughs> like, yeah. On the other hand, keeping it hurts you. Yeah. Um, it hurts me. Mm. But it's hard to tell those kinds of truths when mm -hmm. we think we're going to hurt another person. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a big part of that, too. Yeah. So not just trying to have something that's to myself. But then what about like if I feel like I'm going to hurt the other person? Mm -hmm. Some people say I'd rather not know. Mm -hmm. I've heard that. I've heard that. What do you say? And I think uh, oftentimes that's women that I've heard say that. <laughs> like, what do you say to women? Or maybe like if somebody was like, I think I'd rather not know. What do you think, Tiffany? I would really challenge that person. I would really want to know why. Why do mm -hmm. you not want to know? Because I think there's a reason. If we yeah. say, I don't want to know who your exes are. I don't know. I don't want to know if you slept with that person or not. Like, yeah. I think that there's a reason behind yeah. that. And really getting to the root of that might be able to create more of a safe space in the relationship. That yeah. no matter if I slept with them or not, or... Yeah. If that's my ex or not, if I say it, then it's a safe container. I yeah. feel like a lot of times people are like, I don't want to know because they don't feel like it's a safe space to hear, like yeah. listen to it or even say it. Yeah. Um, that's a tough one, though. I think I have certainly Sorry. heard that. I feel like maybe I've said that in our relationship, mm. like, uh -uh, don't even tell me. Yeah. I don't even want to know. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> In a hypothetical situation, or were there things that that I was doing where you were like, "I don't really want to know." I'm being very, I'm yeah. asking genuinely. Yeah, you know, I feel like it's probably more in the arena of like, if there's, let's say, a friend you introduced me to, mm -hmm. right, and I'm like, oh, you know, I'm kind of friendly with this person. I wonder if there's a history there. And then <laughs> I'm internally in my head like, uh, I don't even want to know. I yeah. don't even want to know. Let's just keep moving on. Yeah. But I think it's some discomfort there with like maybe sitting with the fact that your life didn't start here with me. Yeah. Right? Like you had yeah. a whole life before yeah. me. And whether those are feelings of jealousy, mm. feelings of, you know, I might compare myself like, well, yeah. Yeah person yeah. or like is it something this person had that I don't yeah. have like all of these things that can kind of send you in a spiral so yeah I feel like I've done that early on in our relationship mm -hmm. um but I feel like it came from some insecurity or discomfort with sitting with mm -hmm. your my truth and maybe what was your past yeah yeah <laughs> that's like an interesting self-check that you do when you say like I don't really want to know some part of me wants to be like challenge you to lean in. Mm -hmm. Then another part I like understand is like checking yourself so that you're not operating mm -hmm. just from this place of suspicion. Yeah, right. Sometimes we want to know other people's secrets because we just want to feel like we know everything exactly. so that we can never have anything bad exactly. happen to us. Exactly. If I know everything about you, then I can control this anxiety inside mm -hmm. of me that you could hurt me, yeah. especially when people are anxiously at mm -hmm. attached or have any kind of avoidant attachment, mm -hmm. myself included. <laughs> like I've had to work through all of those yeah. things. And so what you're offering or saying is like a very important like self-check mm -hmm. that we check ourselves. We check in with ourselves and right. say, do I really want to know the answer to this question? Mm -hmm. Am I capable of ans asking this question and accepting whatever the answer is and whatever that's, the response that's is? The one. 
And I, I hope in our relationship, yeah. right, we always work towards being able to accept whatever the answer is, mm -hmm. no matter what, mm -hmm. so that we are having that level of transparency. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that that works in everybody's relationship. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I think that that's a, that's a lesson, right? Yeah. I wouldn't want anybody to listen to this and then walk away being like, we got to share everything. Right, because right. if you know you can't handle everything that somebody has to say, do okay. not tell people that right. you're vulnerable and you're open. Right. You right. know, you really have to work toward that. Right. And that's what I was saying. You have to create the safe space in your relationship where you can say the thing. Yeah. But also listen and receive it. Yeah. It's one, like I could say today, like, you need to tell me this secret. Right. Yeah. But then there's an, the next piece of this is that I am willing to accept and listen and hear every single thing you have to say. Whether you like it or not. Right. And create a container for that. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's twofold there. So really creating that safe space. When it feels like you're ready, it's yeah. appropriate, you have the capacity. Yeah. Because you could do some really, really bad harms yeah. if you invite the person to share a secret or, you know, and you don't receive it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so I just wouldn't want, I wouldn't want that for anyone to mm -hmm. like, yeah. Prematurely engage yeah. in those types of conversations yeah. without really having the real capacity. And it doesn't yeah. mean you're lying if you don't feel like you can have that conversation right yeah. then. It just means yeah. you're intentional about creating the space so to, true. To, to speak and receive. Right. Mm -hmm. And and you had me really thinking about, okay, so like in couples therapy, mm -hmm. when people say, keep this secret from me. And I say, <laughs> no, no. I told you from day one, I don't keep yeah. secrets. We don't divulge the secret right then. Yeah. We actually do the work together individually to work towards sharing the secret. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'll give them the caveat ahead of time, though. If you ever do tell me something, we're going to spend some time working together to share this in our work. Mm -hmm. That's the requirement for working mm -hmm. together. And so you're that's the parallel that happens in the relationship yeah. where the therapist is there or not. Even though you have this secret, you should be kind of working yeah. towards sharing it. Right. Uh, eventually, if mm -hmm. it's impacting you, if yeah. it's impacting the relationship, right. it's viable information yeah. that the other person should know mm -hmm. in order for you all to work together right. and heal and mm -hmm. grow. Uh, because you can't have relationships from inauthentic mm -hmm. places or from places right. that are, you know, shrouded in lies yeah. or inconsistency or any kind of like mystery. Yeah. Uh, relationships, in order to have real lasting commitment, mm -hmm. I think they need, you know, clarity, mm -hmm. <laughs> consistency, good communication. Yeah. And uh, a lot of compassion. Right. Absolutely. And I feel like if it's a moment where internally you become aware of this thing that you haven't said or yeah. this thing that feels like a secret, we should just pay attention to what those things are because it could be some indicator that, oh, I need to start healing this. Mm. Like you're saying, yeah. like it's something that's like, pay attention. Yeah. Like. If you haven't said this thing, it might be, let's work through the next couple yeah. of months to share this thing. It's yeah. not coming up for a reason. Like, it's coming yeah. up to be healed. So yeah. I would just, I just really encourage, mm -hmm. and I try to, you know, mm -hmm. if there's anything that comes up and I'm like, mm -hmm. I haven't said this to Mo, like, mm -hmm. maybe I should be. Like, how do yeah. I work on communicating this mm -hmm. in an effective way? That is so insightful. So the idea that even maybe your, your negative feelings about yeah. me are a secret, <laughs> right? Sometimes people keep in that stuff, yes, yes. but you're saying like, you should share that. Mm -hmm. If you like hate every single time they do this particular thing right. and they're steady doing it, it bothers you, right. but you're keeping it to yourself or right. I'm keeping it to right. myself in order to not hurt Tiffany's feelings. I am not helping you mm -hmm. or the relationship. Right. And so that has become, that would have become a secret in right. this case. Right. Uh, so it's not just like secrets, like I cheated on you, right? <laughs> it's secrets like, Every time, yeah. you know, you wake me up before my alarm goes off, yes. I am very thrown off and bothered yes. by that. And I'm harboring it. You know, that's also mm -hmm. a secret. Mm -hmm. For me, it's an indicator that I'm not sharing my voice about something. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God, you have put this toilet paper. Toilet tissue on the road the wrong way again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is not like a, a deep secret, but like it's something, <laughs> something that, that wells she says up that. <laughs> something that wells up that um i need to communicate yeah i got a question though okay for people that have let's say you have a partner i.e me mm -hmm. <laughs> just or in for this example. relationship yeah you have a partner that doesn't like surprises yeah right 
Uh-huh. Um, but you really love the idea of like surprising them and like keeping things a little bit low key. Yeah. Do you feel like it's appropriate to have secrets in that regards in a mm-hmm. more playful, like say I'm planning this trip for you or like yeah. I am like wanting to get you this really big gift. Like mm-hmm. I guess I guess a larger question is, do you feel like it's ever appropriate to like legit hold a secret? So basically you're talking about me <laughs> <laughs> while trying to act like you're not talking about me. <laughs> There's not a trip to spend there. Right. Just, okay. Maybe. You're right. Maybe. So I think I would be curious for sure about yeah. like why that person doesn't like surprises. Mm-hmm. So if it's that they just don't know how to receive love, mm-hmm. they need to learn how to do that. Okay. You're not going to hurt them by surprising them. Yeah. And so I would say that that's like great. Yeah. And y'all can work through that. Yeah. But if the person doesn't like surprises because there's like some type of trauma related to True. being surprised and right. they get dysregulated. You know what that looks like yeah. prior to that coming yeah. up. Yeah. Now, for me, I think I just don't often know how to just receive yeah. these big grand gestures. Like, yeah. I don't always feel worthy. And mm-hmm. so secrets in that regard are good yeah. because they, I mean, the surprise catches me off guard and then mm-hmm. I feel even more love. <laughs> um, and then yeah. I just have to receive it. I don't yeah. have a choice. Yeah. So that's great. Uh, I would say that that is an okay secret. Yeah. And um, I brought that up because I, I think if people say like, We'll handle secrets, but when it comes to like, I got a little say. I have a little account on the side. That's a secret. My partner, my partner always in there looking, and I really want to buy them this gift, or you know, I'm spending extra time outside the house planning this party for mm-hmm. them that they don't know about. They might yeah. not. Know, I might be yeah. um, embellishing where I am yeah. so that yeah. they don't know like the yeah. details. Of so I was just curious as to those yeah. moments where you think a secret might be like right. appropriate. Right. <laughs> now this is for a future episode, but yeah. I will say this. Yeah. Just because people don't have secrets does not mean they have good communication. And I'm just going to leave that right there <laughs> because I think mm-hmm. a lot of people will think because you talk about everything, you're being straight up about mm-hmm. everything. But we there are so many ways that we don't really say our full truth mm-hmm. that go beyond just secrets. Like yeah. what we would quote unquote call secrets. Yeah. Um, there are so many ways that we hold our voice, you know, don't offer our authenticity in relationships. Mm-hmm. But we got to talk about that mm-hmm. in future mm-hmm. episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm glad you let me pick your brain a little bit about the secret thing. And you taught yeah. me some things that I had to take back into my practice. <laughs> I always learn a lot from you. Yeah. Um, I should probably do this more often. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, secrets don't have to be a bad thing. Yeah. Right? Like they can literally, like we were we've been saying, it can be a real opportunity for healing. It yeah. can be an opportunity for you to come together to yeah. like explore something that might be deeper there. Yeah. Um I do have kind of like another spicy question as it relates. You got to like one minute. No. <laughs> <laughs> it might be for a later topic, but I guess um, my larger question was: What if your partner, your romantic partner, doesn't know the deepest, darkest secret, and someone else does? Mm. Yeah, you're trying to start trouble. Like, this is what we call in therapy. We call it a doorknob question, right? Like, we're, or doorknob. I forget what the term is. We call them all kinds of things. But it's just that clients will wait till the end of session to ask this question. That is like, really, it flips. You basically want to be like, come on now. You waited till the end of session. This is a big deal. Like, I, I feel like we have a range of responses to finding out that our mm-hmm. our lover has shared something with somebody else mm-hmm. that they haven't told us. Yeah. I think you really have to question why. Yeah. You know, if the the foundation of our relationship is friendship mm-hmm. and you've got another best friend mm-hmm. that you you right. are entitled to right. have. Right. But there's if the secret that you're holding is relevant to our relationship too, why would we not be talking about that? Mm -hmm. That's the question I would ask Mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. I can't answer that for them. What do you think? I mean, I think that's a tough one. Like earlier I was talking about some insecurity that might arise if you feel like you don't know everything about a person. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think again, for me, that might come up like, yeah. okay, this person knows that about you. You're in a relationship with me. And I don't know. Like, I would be really curious. I think it gets a lot more convoluted if it's family, yeah. if it's friend. Like, you have these 
life experiences, um, situational things that you've gone through with people that mm-hmm. I think we have to honor. Like, okay, like you have a twin. You have gone through life with a full twin by your side. Yeah. All of the years before we met. So there yeah. are probably some things that I mm-hmm. don't know fully. I don't know the extent. Mm-hmm. Not because you're like, I'm going to keep this thing a secret. <laughs> but because you went through those things together. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like I've had to work through that. But yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really reconciling um, what insecurity might be coming up for you. As yeah. it relates to you not knowing a thing yeah. about another person. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's juicy. I feel like we could we could go on and on about that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a be your own best friend okay. kind of episode or something. Mm-hmm. I'm not... I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I just appreciate you going, you know, going through that with me, yeah. talking about secrets, and I look forward to our next episode. So. Yes. You all tune in next time. Next this time. has been hashtag Love Goes Podcast with Moari and Tiffany. All right, y'all have a great day. Bye. If you're listening to this on Apple Podcasts, don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. If you want your question featured in an upcoming episode of the hashtag Love Goals Podcast, go ahead and send your question to lovegoalspodcast at gmail.com. Check out our website at lovegoalspodcast.com and follow us on Instagram at lovegoalspodcast. We look forward to hearing from you soon.